Hi guys, Korean Movie Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a Korean action film released in 2005, A Bittersweet Life. This movie is a story about a gangster who is assigned to keep an eye on his big boss mistress on suspicion of having an affair. But it turns out that he falls in love with the mistress. After finding out the mistress has an affair, he decides to spare the mistress life instead of killing her. Because of his disobedience to his boss, it leads to a chain of events that will ultimately result in betrayal and bloodshed. What will happen to the gangster? Will he get a chance to confess his feelings to the mistress and make up with his boss? Let's find it out. Wu is a young, high-ranking mobster and enforcer in the employ of his big boss, Mr. Kang. Wu is a lonely man and known as a ruthless cold-blooded killing machine. Because of his loyalty, he earns a sincere trust in Mr. Kang and becomes his most loyal employee. He is currently in charge of managing Mr. Kang's hotel and ensures the hotel runs well and secure. He doesn't hesitate to evict or even beat up some guests who he thinks are disturbing just like what he did to gangsters after insisting not to leave the hotel. They end up bruised, badly beaten by Wu. The gangsters turned out to work for Beck, another gangster leader and also Mr. Kang's rival. One day, Mr. Kang invites Wu to have lunch to discuss their business. But the conversation doesn't end there, Mr. Kang informs he is having a business trip for the next three days, and all of sudden assigned Wu a rather unusual task. To keep an eye on a young pretty lady, called Su. Who is secretly Mr. Kang's mistress. Mr. Kang loves her very much, but due to the age difference, he suspects she may be having an affair. Besides that, Mr. Kang asks Wu to report any information that he got. He even gives with a green light to execute Su and her affair if it is confirmed that she is cheating. As his boss requested, Wu starts doing his task and comes to Su's house. Wu is fascinated to see Su who has an innocent, pretty face with much younger age compared to Mr. Kang. He delivers Su a beautiful night lamp as a gift from Mr. Kang. Wu also introduces himself as her private bodyguard assigned by Mr. Kang while he's away. Knowing that Wu comes to watch her, Su shows her discomfort and discharges Wu from his duty. Wu obviously keeps spying on her secretly, he follows her to everywhere she heads to. Until one day, Su unexpectedly calls Wu in the early morning and asks him to accompany her to have lunch. During lunch, they start to have a short chit-chat. When Su performs classical cello music on the stage, Wu quietly enjoys her performance. After spending a day with Su, Wu who is always lonely and even never has any friend, unexpectedly starts to have feelings for her. Do you think that's the right moment for him to fall for her? Wu keeps his eyes on Su, while Su becomes more suspicious since she often sees other men. At first, he thought the man is just a friend of hers because he drops her off and she goes home, just it. Therefore, Wu doesn't inform Mr. Kang about it. But one late night, the man stayed overnight at her house. Wu then runs into her house, and finds the man who has just finished his bath. When he discovers that Su is indeed having an affair, Wu decides to take it upon himself to beat the man up. Su is very shocked and cries. Wu takes his phone to immediately call Mr. Kang, but due to his mercy and love for Su, he doesn't do it. Instead, warn them, and tell them to never see each other even again, to completely forget that they ever met. Su so doesn't believe that Wu didn't tell Mr. Kang about what has just happened, she even gets offended and pushes him away. After arguing with Su, on the way back to his apartment, a stranger comes to Wu and asks him to apologize to his rival gangster whom he beat previously in the hotel or something terrible will happen to him. Wu ignores it and chases him away. Wu feels restless and anxious because he didn't obey the commands of Mr. Kang, concealing Su's affair from him and even spare their lives, while on the other side, if he tells Mr. Kang the truth, Mr. Kang will definitely get rid of Su which he doesn't want to happen. He keeps thinking about that until he falls asleep. No longer after that, he awakes, finding himself surrounded by a group of gangsters, armed with weapons to beat him. Wu doesn't have time to escape and is unable to fight them back. The gangsters kidnap him and bring him to an empty abandoned warehouse. He is helplessly at a disadvantage and tied on the roof. The gangster boss then shows himself, it is Beck. Beck punishes and cruelly tortures him after what he did to the gangsters previously. Beck orders his men to kill Wu. Instead of apologizing to Beck, Wu vents his anger and says that he will never forget what Beck has done to him. 
Just before Wu gets executed, he suddenly throws up his food over the place. Feeling so disgusted with his vomit, the gangster decides to take him down. They cover Wu's head and throw him to an unknown place in a pouring rain. With hands still tied, Wu finally manages to remove the cover from his head. A car then approaches Wu with a group of men getting off from it. They are Mr. Kang with his gangsters coming to Wu to express his disappointment after feeling betrayed by his most trusted man. Mr. Kang asks Wu why, but Wu has nothing to explain. For Wu, it was merely a sudden overwhelming emotion that is indescribable, and yet guided his movements from that point onward. Something stirred in both his heart and mind. It could be his love for Su, but it could also just be his first realization of the loneliness in his life. No matter what it is, it's a feeling that Wu can never seem to define it to Mr. Kang. Mr. Kang hands over Wu to his gangsters and orders his new accomplice to handle it. Mr. Kang's new accomplice then cruelly hit Wu's hand with a wrench. Wu's hand is heavily bleeding. But it doesn't end there, Wu is pushed into a muddy pit and buried alive. After a while, Wu, who is still alive, struggles to get out of the leap. The gangsters purposely wait for him to come out from the leap, and bring him to another place. Wu is given a second chance, to call Mr. Kang and ask for his forgiveness. Wu takes the phone and calls Mr. Kang apologizes, but when the gangsters are careless, Wu fights them all alone and manages to escape from them. Wu has no intention to apologize to Mr. Kang, he even swears to himself that he will take his revenge. After escaping from the gangsters, he goes into hiding and devises a plan to attack Mr. Kang. Before he executes his plan, he stops by Sa's house and leaves a night lamp that Sa wants to buy, as a farewell gift. Wu then buys some guns from a gun dealer who knows him as Mr. Kang's man. They are about to make a deal but the gun dealer finds out that Wu is no longer with Mr. Kang. The deal ends in a gunfight and Wu kills all the gun dealers. He gets out of the place and steals all the guns. Now, Wu is confident to take his revenge on Beck and Mr. Kang. He firstly frames Beck to come to the ice rink. They start arguing but Beck slyly attacks him with a knife on his hand. Seeing Wu get stabbed, Beck gets excited without noticing that he is taking a gun from his bag and suddenly shoots him to death. Although he was injured, Wu still heads straight to a hotel where Mr. Kang and his gangsters stay. Upon arrival at the hotel, he immediately shoots all the gangsters to death. He even kills his best friend who worked together with him as Mr. Kang's enforcer. After killing all the men, he finally meets his former boss, Mr. Kang. Wu vents bitterly over how badly he has been treated despite his seven years of service and being treated like a dog for all this time. Mr. Kang does not answer, and instead asks if Wu's actions were directly because of Su. Wu then shoots him dead. It doesn't come to an end since Beck's henchmen chasing Wu to take revenge, prompting a shootout between them. During the shootout, Wu gets to kill all Beck's men, but he also gets shot in the head. At the end of the story, Wu is sitting, dying from multiple gunshot wounds. He tries to call Sir but his phone falls, pauses to reminisce on his only day with her, when he had escorted her to her music recital, in his memory, as he watches her play her cello, he finds himself overwhelmed with emotion and, in a rare moment of contentment, he smiles for the first time in the entire film. As he sheds a tear over this memory, the brother of the gun dealer whom he killed previously, comes and executes him. Do you think Wu died in vain because he can't get a chance to confess his feelings to Sir even until his last breath? Do you think it is worth it to spare someone's life at your own risk to die? Leave your comments below. And also make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and see you, next time.